Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica Global Customer Support. My name is Rahul Kumar Tiwari and today as part of this video KB we would be looking at heart delay detection. So let's start with the agenda for the video. We will start with the introduction as in what heart delay detection is. We will follow this up by what are different types of heart delay detection or different ways to enable it. What are different flag values that we associate in the base object. How to configure this heart delay detection using the different SQL queries that we need to execute and the user exit that needs to be implemented and we follow this up by a demo. So starting with the introduction, so in MDM a different source system contributes uh, towards consolidation of a data. Now this data when received for so from source systems are continuously updated but these records which once have been inserted into MDM or in the BO might also get deleted from this from the respective source itself. So this entire hard delay detection is an exercise to figure out which all records once contributed have been deleted from this source itself and then using the configuration around HDD we sort delete these records. So that's what it has mentioned that source system that populates these objects are continuously updated and record might be hard deleted from this source system. Hard deleted records are records that are removed from the source system. The MDM hub can detect the records as a hard deleted in source system and it can reflect the changes in the associated base object. And now there's a popular myth that hard delete detection uh, owing to its name is permanently or hard deleting the records. So it's not the case. Uh, it's only updating the hub state indicator that's changing it from active to inactive or, and that's why it's a soft delete. Now how what is the mechanism behind this hard delete detection? The mechanism is that the MDM hub state job compares all the records in the latest source system file against all the records in the PRL table. So this configuration or this uh, mechanism is very similar to that of delta detection and that's why hard delay detection is enabled uh, is uh, workable when delta detection is enabled. Uh, so basically uh, it works with the full data set and not with your incremental uh, or transactional load. So uh, to go in detail, the MDM hub detects the records that are missing in the latest source system file and it flags those records as hard deletes for a full load. To put it more simply, suppose on day one, I, rec I received a file which is having a couple of records A and B, which has been inserted in my BO. Now next day, I receive another file, which is a full file. And in that file, I receive A and C now, and the B is missing. So what uh, stage process will do is it compare A and C, which is my latest file available in landing, landing table to that of A and B that is available in PRL. And since B is missing, it will flag that as hard delete. Now flagging that as hard delete means it will insert another entry in landing table named B with having HSI as minus one. And then when it is loaded at the BO level, it makes the records inactive. Uh, so this configuration is workable with Oracle and SQL. Uh, right now it is not uh, workable with DB2 and an enhancement request has been submitted for it. So let's see what are the different type of hard delete uh, that we can enable. So it's pretty straightforward. There are only a couple of types. One is direct and the other is consensus. So each catered to a specific uh, requirement. Suppose uh, you have a BO where only single source system contributes and that's why only single source system decide uh, whether or not your record should be inactivated when you're not receiving it from that particular source. So if you have a single source system, uh, we need to enable direct HDD. But if there are multiple source systems that are responsible to determine the state of your record, then uh, a consensus delete needs to be enabled. Now the working mechanism uh, difference between two could be understand following this KB 123404. Uh, it's a uh, couple of lines that has been instated over this KB like what is the difference between direct and consensus but to understand it more specifically suppose I have a record A which is having an XREF instance now second day when I don't receive uh, any entry for that particular record A XREF instance for that record A directly gets inactivated or uh, the flag gets updated to I, the delete flag and that we mark as part of HD process that gets updated to I showing that this particular record has been inactivated. But in case of consensus, my A, the record A is, is, compro uh, is comprising of multiple XRF owing to the fact that is coming from different sources. So what happens is say 
A is getting contributed by three different sources S1, S2, and S3. Now, when I do the full load the next day and I don't receive the contribution of A from S1, that particular X ref of S1 would change to P, which means partially inactive. Uh, and same would happen until there is only one X ref left. And when the last X ref would not receive an entry from its source, that particular X ref would turn into I. So when you have multiple X ref contributing to a single record, until unless the final X ref is uh, not getting an update or an entry for that particular record, all other X ref would turn to P. And then the final x ray would turn to i we will see all this in detail uh, why, uh, going forward in the video uh, before that let's talk about the different flags that we were talking about p i n a so uh, when we enable hdd we have to mark a column which uh, would have delete flag value in the base object so that particular delete flag would have three values a which is active i which stand for inactive or fully deleted and p which stand for partially deleted so we just saw that a and i are for uh, direct delete while p is an additional for consensus delete right. so let's see how do we configure sdd at the first place so to configure sdd we have to run a set of queries uh, all this mostly this uh, queries are related to creating the repos table that is related to sdd which is known as c repos external hard delete detect table and then adding constant on this table with foreign key enablement we will see through this query then we have to add a job metric type code in the job metric table we know that uh, as part of every job load stage we have a job metric and then additionally we have to an add another metric for hdd and then we have to uh, add some trust and consolidate uh, validation if in case we are setting up consensus now, why we require this we'll see this later in the video and then how do we implement uh, SDD in the user exit? So, uh, and where do we need to do so? So basically there are two sp spaces where SDD needs to be enabled when it comes to user exit. So first is post stage, the other is post load. So uh, post load, I'm sorry, it's the other line. The first is post load and then the post stage. So post load is required for both uh, direct and consensus but uh, only in case of consensus we need to add post stage so we will see that so let's uh, follow this up with a demo and we first we quickly create this uh, required sdd tables and all the constraints that are required on top of this so let's start with the configuration that is required uh, for hardware detection in terms of sql queries so first and foremost the thing which we need to do is we need to create this external table which repos table so what we can do is we can use this query. You can get this query from configuration guide. Uh, configuration guide has all this detail of these queries. You can select all these queries and run at once, but for the demo purpose, I'm running at one after the other. So what we have to do is we have to create uh, this table. So this our table got created. Now the next thing is we will add comment on each of this column. Now to understand what is the role of each of the column, uh, we can go through the configuration guide. But just to understand few things, I'll just explain it while these comments are running. So here are a quick, uh, quick introduction to this table. So as part of this table, uh, we have a column, row ID table. Now this is the row ID table of the staging table for which we are going to enable this hard delay detection. HDD enabled it has value 1 or 0 which means whether it is enabled or not std type it will have value direct or consensus showing whether the whether it's a single source or multiple source that is required delete flag column name what is the column name that we have selected as part of our bo or staging whatever you say uh, which uh, which is going to hold the value of active inactive and partial and what are what do we mean by active and active partial like this should have i inactive should have sorry active should have a inactive should have i and partial should have p and has ended now it's an option parameter if you are making it inactive you can pass end it along with that and so you have you can configure that in the view ended column what is the ended column name uh, that you have selected as part of your view what is the ended value 
and what is trans HTD enabled now you can look in the configuration right to understand what this is but at, at the base level it just uh, shows that whether the process of delay uh, detecting hard delays are transactional or not there are a couple of additional optional columns um, that is only required when you have some specific configuration which can be checked from config guide let's uh, let's uh, look at the other queries that are required so now the external table that i have created on top of that we are going to add certain constraint like the hdd type can only be director consensus the hard delete hdd enabled could only be zero and one has ended could be zero and one and uh, it could it would have a unique row id table so all this content uh, constraint would be adding it so this is added now after that one more important thing to do is to enable the foreign key and uh, now the foreign key constraint that you are going to enable is between uh, the repos table row id table and a foreign key on top of row id table column that we have added in the repos external hard delete detection so we are going to do it and the final operation that we need to do from SQL end is adding a additional job metric in Cpos job metric type with metric type as 100 which stand for SDD. So, so here we will we'll do that. So this com completes all our operation which are required from SQL end. Coming to changes that needs to be done from MDM hub end, they are very simple. A couple of them for direct and three of them for consensus. So for direct, what we need to do is uh, first we need to for the BO which uh, for which we are enabling HDD, we need to add couple of columns. One is say delete flag which will hold the values A, P, and I based on the uh, availability of record from source, and the other column is option which is end date. Now once we have added this couple of columns in the view, we need to map them using mapping from our landing. So make sure that this couple of columns are part of all landing, uh, all staging tables and landing as well. Now after doing that, what we need to do is we need to insert that particular entry into the repos table that we have just created. So we created repos external hard delete. So we need to add the row ID table or, or basically you can run the entire SQL just passing the staging table name for which you want to enable the SDD. Okay, so now in this SQL you'll find an additional column, uh, but since I have not used it, so I, we, we could remove it from over here. So this, this is one additional entry that needs to be done. Apart from that, uh, in post load, sorry, post landing, uh, correction, it's not post load its post landing so as part of post landing we need to add a couple of lines as part of our post landing code which will implement our SJD class or hub uh, hard delete detection class which is available under MDM UE jar so implementing that class we can enable SJD so here is an example available for direct SJD implementation so what happens is for direct there is only single source that is contributing so this is my sample bo record uh, which is coming from source one so this is xrf entry uh, and this is bo entry for that particular record james robert james jones so what happens is after implementing my sdd uh, if this particular entry this customer id doesn't flows from source system one using the sdd module there would be entry in landing where the del flag or which we have created in the bo and which we would be mapping in staging and landing will change to i uh, another correction i think it's not the hub state indicator which gets toggled it's the flag code which changes to i and a so this gets inactivated and once you load it at the xref level this changes to i and same is reflected at the bo level uh, you can again re reactivate this record so suppose on day three you receive this record so you can reactivate it again and once you reactivate it it changes to a again similarly we have to implement consensus the only thing that would change is uh, the sdd type would be uh, would change from direct to consensus and in addition to the column addition that we do as part of bo we need to add a validation rule now we'll see why it is required but first let's uh, see what validation rule needs to be added so it's just a sample validation rule so what we need to do is we need to downgrade the percentage 
uh, for uh, del date and del code uh, where sdt del code is like p so when we look at the example we'll understand why we are doing it so so here is an example of consensus uh, sdt so right now i have a single record which is customer id 25 it is coming from three different sources source 1 2 and 3 now on day one when i'm not receiving this record from source 3 say what happens is at the xf level instead of changing uh, this flag del code changing to i it changes to p and now what happens is suppose this particular xf was contributing to my bio record so since it has changed to p and we have added a validation rule to downgrade the test the active records uh, that uh, that are the still active records will contribute to my bio record same thing would happen you know the very next day if i receive uh, not receive this record from source one it will change to p now if you see uh, on day three if i'm going to uh, i'm not going to receive update from source two now pre uh, previously all other xref have changed to p only one single xref is remaining and now this particular xref will change to i on day three and when it changed to i this being the highest trusted record right now because for p we have already downgraded the trust it will flow to bo level so the additional configuration that we need to need to do for consensus is enabling trust and validation and we have to implement this logic to check all the xref or the final xref to be turned into i as part of our postage user exit so it's post landing and post user exit that plays a role over here. Uh, before moving on, if we, we again reactivate a record, it gets reactivated and it flows to um, our bio being the latest update from the source. So that was a quick demo of configuration that need to enable HDD. Uh, you can refer all this information from the configuration guide and there are a couple of KBs which have the lines of code that I mentioned that needs to be added as part of post landing and post stage user exit. We would love to hear your feedback on these videos KBs. These are the forums where you can provide your feedback. Thank you.